So as we continue our discussion of interfaces, I want to return to some documentation. And I know we're looking at Java documentation, but the comparable interface is really something that Kotlin inherits from Java. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to read this interface a couple of different ways and get a sense of what's going on here. So the, the first thing I want to uh, do is read it sort of as a contract. And that's how you might approach it if you were going to implement it. Right, And we talked a little bit about how in an interface, we need documentation because just knowing what methods to implement is not sufficient. You need to know what they're supposed to do. And so if I read this, if I, if I wanted to make my class comparable, for example, um, the first thing I'd have to have some understanding of is why, right? What do I get out of it? And there's quite a few things. But once I sit down to start to do this, then the interface documentation starts to become this contract it's almost like you know you're someone's handing you a contract for work that you need to do you need to go through this carefully to make sure you understand what you need to do right in this case it's very simple there's only one method but if you don't implement comparable properly if you provide that interface but don't implement it correctly it can go things that go very wrong right so for example if you don't implement comparable correctly and something tries to sort an array of objects of your type it's just gonna you're just gonna get back gibberish Right, so you really do need to, to follow this. Um, and so the, the real contractual part of this, there is description here that you would probably go through and read, but, but the real contractual part has to do um, with, with the, the method itself, right? So I come down here and I look at this, and this is what I would have to do, right? And this is a little bit tricky. Again, I, I, I get you know uh, flummoxed a little bit by this. I have to come back and look at the, the documentation to kind of remind myself about which direction things, things go into, right? Um, and then you know there there are some other there are some other things right so for example uh, transitivity right which is which is important and then this this sign uh, requirement so essentially if I reverse the arguments to compare to I should get a different signed result I don't have to get the same uh, result right uh, it, it looks here um, and and you'll see I'm using the sign function but basically the idea is if I take compare to and I switch the operands um, I should get if I had a positive result, I should get a negative result. If I had a negative result, I should have a positive result, right? So this is what you have to be able to do. Now, depending on the details of your class, we're going to implement this a few times. You might go about this in different ways, but this is what you are supposed uh, to, to be able to do, right? And, and you're supposed to make sure that these things hold, right? This is the contract that you are signing up for in order to participate in this sort of comparable agreement, right? As long as you do your part of it, there is um, a, a lot of benefit, and we'll talk a little bit about that when we talk about the other side of things, which is kind of looking at this as, as an abstraction barrier. But as long as you do your work on your side of the interface, as long as you fulfill the contract that the interface represents, the, a lot of good things will, will happen and your class will be able to use, be used in some new and exciting ways by code that you've never even heard of, you didn't write and don't maintain.